hope you guys can hear me okay. Oh. Um, so today I'm going to attempt to show you how to create extra depth with using transparent, translucent, and clear resin. I always like doing this with my artwork and also when I do like countertop finishes, it just makes it more realistic and more like depth. I don't know the word. It's not depthy because I always, I always get feedback from y'all when I make up words. But anyways, it'd be more depthy, but that's not the proper term. Anyways, let's see if I can get you guys in better shot, better angle. What's up, Susan? How are you doing? So I did this, um, this brown and copper finish on the channel a while back. Some of you may remember it, but um, I already have a few like sample pieces like this and so I don't really need I don't really need any more brown and copper finishes <gasps> Tiffany how are you doing um thank you guys for watching and coming in and see what I'm up to today I really really appreciate it if you could leave me your thumbs that'd be awesome it just really helps my channel so the first color I'm going to mix up, I thought was going to be magenta, but I'm apparently out of it. Oh, there's a little bit. These are the tints from uh, Color Obsession. They are translucent, transparent colors. And you can add as much of the colorant as you like and it will never be opaque. So you can put just a little bit of it in and get a lighter shade or put more of it and get a darker shade, but it'll never be opaque. So if you wanted to use like a paste to make something translucent, you could put just a little bit of it in, but it would have like a very quote watered down color. And so for a better color payoff, you may want to try to add more of the paste or mica in, but that's the more you add, the more it's going to be uh, closer to opaque or you can't see through it. And so if you just use a tint made for resin like these um, color obsession tints, then you don't have to worry about your colors going opaque. So this is magenta from color obsession. I'll do another one of these, um, not today, but at some juncture with um, the dyes, so you can see what that would look like as well. This one is emerald, added a few drops, so it's very dark, but hopefully you can see there on the tip here the light shade that it will be. You'll be able to see the shades more, more better that's not a word, um, more accurately once I get all of the color um, onto the surface because once the color goes over something that's white or a, just a bright color, gold maybe, um, then you'll be able to see the color better. This one is aqua with blue lagoon in it. It's also a tint from color obsession. You can get all of these colors on my website, artisttilldeath.com if you haven't um, and you didn't know that, now you know. So, Tiffany didn't get to work today. Oh, thanks. Well, I'm sorry you had transmission issues. That's never fun, but I'm glad to see you here though. The next one I'm using is Old Gold from Color Passion. This is a floating gold. It's very vibrant, very bright, very beautiful. 
it can take over a piece very easily, so you have to be very careful and not manipulate it too much. I'm gonna put this under my clear translucent resins, so I'm hoping that it doesn't float all the way to the surface, and if it does, it's not too much, but I'm gonna do the test so you guys don't have to. Look how beautiful and bright that is. It's very much like Color Obsessions 007. It's a little bit more of a deeper color, Almost antique gold, but not quite. It's kind of a hybrid gold. And then also I'm going to do some top cell white. And this is going to bring out all the colors since everything in the background is so dark. And this is a paste. I love working with paste. Paste are my jam. I don't have to worry about mica getting into the air. It comes in both metallic and flat or matte, like not shiny, like this white. There's no shimmer to it whatsoever. It's just a solid matte flat color. But it's not really matte because it's in resin, so it's going to be shiny. But I don't have another more appropriate way to call it as, you know, not shiny. So we're going with matte because I just for lack of a better term. So this is a 16 by 20 cradle board. A cradle board means that it is solid. It's not canvas, so it's not going to dip in the middle when I put all of this heavy resin on it. I mixed up about nine ounces and I saved about an ounce of resin that's just clear in case I want to mix up some more of any one of the colors that I just put together. So what I'm going to do first is take this painting that I've already done. It was a sample for a countertop. And I'm just going to turn it into a piece of artwork, something that I could sell to someone that they would want to hang on their wall. And so first things first is I'm going to add some white in a few of the areas. I'm just going to make it kind of go along with what is already here because I like the flow, general flow of the, the design that I have in here. But the colors are meh because it's it was made to be a, a countertop sample. So I'm just creating these bands of white. I kind of like how that's feathering out. And I'm pretty sure I'll be able to see that under the other resin that we're going to add. So I'm just going to continue to feather that out. I'm just kind of smearing it. but I'm gonna leave this not smeared. However, I don't want it to be equal like this, so I'm just gonna fill this out to the corner. For me, in my artwork, I don't do anything that's perfectly symmetrical because that just doesn't sit in people's eyes quite right. A little asymmetry is always easier for people's eyes to take in, at least in my opinion. I have no idea. I do have an art degree, but um, I'm by no means like the end all be all artist. I think on this one, I want to blend it out. but like evenly blend it out like this, just feather it down. Probably if we apply the clear resin soon enough, you'll be able to see 
these kind of finger brush strokes. So if that's something you want to see, then just add this sweeping texture with your hands right before you apply the clear or tinted resin over it. Otherwise, it's probably going to fill in because it's I've got a lot more resin up here and not so much here. And resin, as you guys may know, is going to self-level. It's just the nature of the beast. And I think I'm going to add a little bit more right here. Typically, my artwork follows the law of thirds. And if you guys want me to do any videos on, like, why I lay out colors the way I do or um, color theory, I know I've had a lot of requests for that. Um, I'm happy to. I'm happy to do videos for whatever it is that you guys want to hear me blather about. So you let me know and I'll make it happen. So this is all gonna be underpainting. I'm liking it, I'm liking it. Well, I bet it's beautiful in Adelaide after bad weather. What's up, Martin in the UK, TG, Donna, Shelly. Thank you guys all for coming in. Okay, now we're going to underpaint with some gold. This, I'm going to hope, doesn't um, float to the top. But I am going to thin it out in some areas like this. I don't know if that's going to aid in it not floating up, but in my head it's going to, but we'll find out. If you're new to my channel, thank you. Hi, hello, how are you? I'm Erica and this is Artist Till Death. If you've never been with us, we do art most every day at 6 p.m. Central, except for on Tuesdays is at 2 p.m. Central. It's not always resin, but it's always a good time, and we are so excited to see you here with us today. Maybe I'll just feather this one off like that. I feel like I like that little gold smear. Maybe I'll just put my finger a little bit into the resin and just add a few smears. Nothing wrong with finger painting. And I don't want it to be exactly even with this being boop, boop, boop. So I'm just going to add a little one up here. Just because I want to see what it's going to look like. All right. And I'm not going to be able to go back and add it after we pour all this other resin out. So we'll just see. I kind of like it just like this, if I'm honest with you guys. Like, I want to do a piece fully like this and just leave it because I'm digging how it looks right now in this moment. Hey, Clara, how are you feeling? But 
I brought you guys here to talk to you about transparency and translucent, so we're gonna do that. All right. So. That magenta is just so nice. I love that color. May have to make some more of that. I'm gonna put the green right here. I'm not sure what this green is gonna look like mixed with that magenta. So I'm gonna try to keep them as separated as possible. So we're gonna put blue in between because if you do a secondary color with blue and magenta, you're gonna get something probably, in my opinion, I would assume a lot more attractive than what you're gonna get with the green and the pink. Typically colors opposite on a color wheel don't make very attractive secondary colors. So just be advised. So I'm just going to put this green in this dark area, this dark void, that if the colors really mix a lot, you're not going to be able to see really what color ended up happening because it's so dark. At least in my head, that's what's happening. We have a lot of kind of rules, like it's just e-science. Okay, so I have a little bit of resin left over, so I'm going to mix up some more magenta and then some more. No, I'm not, I'm not mixing up any more magenta because I used it all. So I'm going to pour all of this into the magenta cup and then put the Blue Lagoon Aqua Mix into this. There's not a left, enough magenta left in here to really alter the color in a noticeable way. And even if it does, it's just gonna give it a purpley hue to it. So we're just gonna go with that. When working with resin, I think it's important to have a go with the flow kind of mindset because honestly, you can only control resin so much and it's just gonna do what it wants to do. So I just kind of see what it's going to do and then help it along and manipulate it as it's going in certain directions. And then I call that my finished artwork just because it's easier that way. So it's got a little bit of a purpley hue to it compared to the last one we mixed, but that's okay. And I put a little bit extra drips in there. so it's coming off a little bit darker than what the first blue that we put on. You can see the difference here. And that's kind of what I was talking about in the beginning of this video when I said that you can add as much of the pigment as you want and it'll just deepen the tone, but it won't make it opaque. Oh. Right. Now comes some of the fun part where you just make sure you have no open resin left, no raw spots. I don't know if you guys can see like right here, it's straight to the board, right here, right here, right here. And we don't want that. So I'm just going to push the resin to fill in those areas. I'm not putting that much pressure down. I'm just skimming the top of it because I don't want to pick up any of the color that I underpainted with. I mean, I will. It's inevitable. Inevitable? I think that's the right word. but I don't want to that much. If I do any of the um, 
purposeful pickup of the underpainting that I do, it will be at the end. So right now we're just filling in the voids. Filling in the voids. I'm trying my best not to mix colors by just wiping my hands off just crudely on some paper that I have. I'm not obsessing about the colors mixing because it is such a darker piece. If it was a lighter piece, I would be a lot more anal about um, the colors staying true, but not so much a concern on this one yet. All right, I think I got everything filled in. And most of my underpainting has stayed under. There are some areas that it's floating up and I'm gonna take you down, give you a closer look, show you what I'm talking about. Uh, let me pop some bubbles first and then I will do just that. Popping bubbles definitely shows me where my low spots still are. And if I have any hair or dust bunnies or whatever floating in my surface. All right. Let me grab you guys. So you can see here where this uh, old gold is starting to float up and travel some, but you can see where it's still under the blue because it's got that sheen to it, but it's popping up in these areas, which I really like because now it, it's something that I couldn't plan these floating bits. You know what I mean? Like if you were to try to do this, it's not going to look like this. Like you couldn't just sprinkle the old gold on. You have to put it under the other colors and let it float up. But it's super neat to see. And so here we have the white under the pink and the blue that are mixing together slightly. Oh, we got some cells and we didn't even try. Today I am using Stone Coat Art Coat. And the white is a top cell white. So as long as it is on top, you will get cells. See where it's over, we have the cells. And where it's under, like here, there are no cells. Up here, it's over, so some cells are popping up. But over here, it's under, so there's no cells. I wish you guys could see the depth that's created in this piece, like in real life. For some reason, my whole life, I've always thought that they should invent smell -a vision And now I'm like, can you guys just have like depthy vision? They make things so cool and so much easier for our resin artists. Yes, there are a couple dry spots. They're always more evident after you heat the piece. After you pop bubbles, it's always more clear where the little dry bits are, but they're easily addressed. All right, now, tilt it, swipe it, leave it. What do you guys think? While I get your answers, I'm just going to hit it with a little bit more heat because I did see a couple hairs. You don't want to do too much heat. You don't want to thin this out because then it's going to run and that's not a good look for anybody. Also, pro tip, if you don't have any tweezers handy and you don't have exclusively my reusable stir sticks and you only have popsicle sticks, 
then you can take a popsicle stick, twist it until it pops, and it'll typically break in a point. And then you can use those points to pull out pears like this. That's the only selling point I'm gonna give you guys about using popsicle sticks. You cannot twist my sticks that way and make hair picker outers. No, there's a hair right here. It's going to mess up my design. Hope not. I truly love the color payoff in this. There's so much you can do with translucent and transparent colors. I don't think they get enough airtime. Additionally, these tints are transparent and they're not alcohol based. These are made for use in resin, so they're not going to fade over time like alcohol inks will when you drop them into resin. I wonder if the pigment manufacturers know the effects the product will be. Who, who knows? E-engineering. Leave it or just go crazy. Why not? It's Monday after all. I just hate the thought of, I should have left it. That's like my biggest fear as an artist is loving it so much and nitpicking areas and then getting to a point where it's like, what did I even do here? Why am I here instead of where I was when I loved it? You know what I mean? Jelly beans. So it looks like the smear look that we really we, we, me, look, I liked in the beginning, it stayed. Whereas where I had it thicker, this white here floated up to the surface. Same with the gold. This is a smear that we had on the bottom and it is still uh, on the bottom of the piece. And down here. Oh, I know, Tiffany, the blue and pink together are such cotton candy vibes. It almost makes me wish I just didn't do the green at all, but never. Because who doesn't like cotton candy vibes? Let me turn this light off, see if it helps, because there's quite a glare. The colors aren't quite as vibrant with that light off, but I think it's still fine though. All right, so most everybody said leave it. So I think I am. I think I'm gonna leave it with a slight tilt so that while it's curing or drying, um, there's a whole raw spot right here. Whoops. It's always good to look at your work from multiple angles to make sure that everything is covered. seeing if I could force more cells to come up, but it may still be too hot from the last time we heated it. Zooming in and it looks absolutely amazing. Well, thank you. Yeah, I think, I think I'm going to call it better safe than sorry and leave it because artist regret, I think is maybe worse than buyer's remorse. Ugh. Trying to get you guys down to show you, oh, we'll just do this. Smarter, not harder. Still JK, I think I have resined this thing together. But anyways. Prefer your earlier work, find this a bit erratic and busy. This is definitely more erratic and busy even than for my own taste, but in order to show off kind of what these translucent pigments 
can do when you put them over something dark. This is a piece that just is going to be more erratic. You can make it more calm by putting less of the thicker lines. Nope, less of the thinner lines. If you put more thin lines, it's going to be more busy. If you put more thick lines, it's going to be less busy. Careful not to get resin on your toes. I'm, I'm surprised my toes aren't just resin together at this point. Northern Lights, I see that. Uh, this painting will forever be named Better Safe Than Sorry, Northern Lights Edition. Anyways, I, I love the piece. These little floating specks. Ooh, even my, y'all, even my old gold is selling, and that is a mica. A floating mica at that, so it usually, well, it's a metal flake, not really a mica. Usually doesn't do that. Um, Martin Green, you are welcome to purchase this piece. I would love for you to purchase this piece. I am into selling artwork as much as I am creating it, so shoot me an email, um, and we can absolutely talk about it. I love it. I'm going to leave it, and underpainting with the old gold and putting translucence over it gave me this floating fleck beautiful look that you see throughout the piece and you can't get that from just sprinkling it on because then it's just going to be full coverage it gets crazy but if you underpaint with it then it'll just fleck up, fleck wave. It's all about the fleck waves. That's how you get that look. And you guys saw me figure it out right here on this channel live because I do the test so you don't have to. All right, you guys, I'm going to go make dinner. And I'm so, so happy. Hi, Michelle. How have you been? We've missed you. MTV and Barbie vibes are some of the best vibes. All right, you guys, I hope you have an amazing evening. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned something, were entertained or otherwise educated about something. And I hope you love it like I do. If not, totally cool. Uh, leave me your thoughts and suggestions down in the description box under this video. And let me know what you think, what you want me to try, anything you want me to test out. And yeah. I'll see you guys tomorrow out live at 2 p.m. Central for 2 o'clock Tuesdays. Till then, thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't. Leave me a comment on what you want me to do or try or see or something next. And, yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Be kind to one another because you never know what someone may be going through. And always remember that we do the test so you don't have to. Leave me your thumbs. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.